to learning C++ with Nick Kotenberg. In this video, we're going to write our very first C++ program. So this is uh, going to be the first step in becoming a real developer. So the first thing we need is kind of a folder to work in. So we're just going to make a little folder called Projects. And then we're going to go into that folder using the cd command. So make directory means you're making a folder in the current directory. And cd is going into whatever your whatever folder you're typing out. So if you do cd dot dot, it's going back. cd is going in, cd dot dot is going back. And you type in ls, you can see what's in that folder. So Linux Mint comes with some folders already. We're creating a new one called projects. So we're cd projects. Now we're going to be doing C++. So I like to, I like to um, separate by languages first. So we do cd, we'll make directory C++. We'll cd into that folder. LS, we'll see it's empty. So then you create our very first um, file. So once again, we're going to make one more. We'll call this one Project 1. So we'll cd into it. Okay, we're finally in our actual project folder. Then we create our file, um, our testing file here. And every file in, in C++ always starts with main. Now you don't have to do that, it's kind of a convention. But you do need a main function, so it's kind of the idea of whatever function is running inside your file, you name the file the same as the function. That may not make a whole lot of sense right now, but it will in time, I promise. Okay, so let's make this file. Oh, also one last thing, the extension here, cpp, that's the extension for uh, C++ files. And the main.c would be uh, for C, but we're doing C++. Um, okay, so we created the file. Now we can open up Sublime here. We're going to open up that folder, which in our case was on our home directory here. Projects, C++, and Project 1, we'll hit open. Now we'll see we have a, um, excuse me here. You see that we have a folder structure over here telling us what we have in our, in our um, file here, in our project. We're going to open up main CPP, and it's clearly an MP file. So now we need to create a file. Now in C++, there's a lot of conventions, and in programming in general, there's a lot of conventions. And some you can follow, and some you don't have to follow. Um, but I suggest sticking to as many of the standards you can possibly stick to, because it will help you develop much better code. And when someone else comes in and reads your code, that they, they can know what to expect. So, um, anyway, I'll try and follow those in this video series, but I, um, I stress that you take a lot of time to learn some of the conventions associated with whatever language you're learning. Now, right before, I know we're keep skipping around, but one last thing before we actually write the first program, I want you to be aware of this uh, website called C++, that's spelled out, .com. This website has a lot of good resources. It's kind of an older website, and um, it's not as pretty to look at, but the information on this website is really, really invaluable if you want to become a C++ developer. Um, just to kind of give you an idea, in references, these are like all the C++, these are C libraries, C++ libraries. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense now, but these are kind of like pre-written code you can use so you don't have to type out certain stuff. Like, for example, if, if, you, don't, if you don't know how to um, write a... Um, a power function, for example, like 2 to the second power. If you don't know how to do that, there's a power function that C++ gives you in the math library here. And these are all the math functions available that you can use instead of writing that code out yourself. Because remember, in coding, you have to write everything yourself. Um, and sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to use um, someone else's code so you don't have to write it from scratch. And uh, there's kind of a term in programming a lot of people use for that. And that's kind of reinventing the wheel. And it's used in a lot of other industries, but in our industry, it's, it's meant writing code that's already written. There's, there's no point in taking that time. Okay, so let's actually write our first code program. So some of the stuff you probably might, may or may not understand, um, just follow along and I'll explain it as we go, but I'm not going to explain everything all at once. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to include, um, include the basic I.O. library, and that's for input-output um, library. And we're going to use the basic standard namespace of std. Then we're going to create our first function here that's going to accept the integer rc. It's the number of arguments coming in. And then a um, character array of argv. And then we're going to say c out hello world. We're going to have a, a new line here. And then we're going to return zero. Okay, so this is 
just about the most basic C++ program you can write. Um, and you can kind of guess what's going to happen. It's going to console. It's going to send an out stream to the console, C out, or count, some people say, uh, of hello world. And that's going to have a new line. So let's run that. So we'll do C, oh, excuse me, uh, G plus plus plus, which is the G the C plus plus uh, C plus plus compiler. Oh, actually, I'm not sure I installed that. Let's install that real quick. Let's make sure we have everything we need. So C plus plus G C C and build essential. So all the libraries, make sure they're installed. Real quick. Okay. And then we'll do G plus plus, or yeah, G plus plus. It's been a bit since I've done C plus plus. CPP. I'll compile it. Oh, so we gotta have to install it. G plus plus. Yes. This is a C++ compiler. What it does is it compiles the code um, into binary so your operating system can run it. And a binary in Linux is not going to run in Windows and vice versa. The Linux does have something called Wine, which allows you to run Windows binaries in Linux, but generally speaking, you can't. So, okay. So now we're ready to go. Finally. Okay. And now you'll see it created this out file. This is a binary for the computer to run. And uh, obviously, that's a lot, a lot of binary for this little file. And the reason for that is because we included a whole library here. So most of this is actually the input-output stream. And your, your program is probably, you know, somewhere like down here. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, probably, maybe even less than that, like down here. But anyway, so basically your program, you have a couple memory references, and you're out. Anyway, okay, and this is your return zero you see right there, zero, zero. Okay, so here we go. Let's um, run the first program. So we need to say our current directory here, and then we're going to run that file. So, hello world. Yay, you created your very first C++ program. Pretty exciting. Well, not that exciting, but kind of cool. feels nice to have, have something you can create. And you, so you can come in here, and you can see out all you want and create a, a whole program for that. And then obviously there's a lot more that needs to be done, but we have our very first program. So, um, thank you for watching, and I hope uh, you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like it and subscribe, and we're going to continue in the next video, and we're going to learn all sorts of stuff. Integers, um, strings, characters, a whole world of classes, which is really exciting, I think, when programming. That gives you a whole bunch of power. Classes are what drive um, object-oriented C++ programming. It, it's, it's, it's awesome. Create multiple files, how to include your own files. There's a whole world. Uh, maybe even get into OpenGL and we'll write some graphics programs and we'll, we'll do some cool stuff. Okay, well thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time.